Assalamu alaikum, this is Dr. Hasna with Hasna's Natmi and today we're discussing one of the cranial nerves. Do not forget to subscribe to my channel, I make a Natmi a piece of cake and let's get right into the video. So today we're talking about the 11th nerve, also known as the accessory nerve. I'm sure you've heard it somewhere, but today we're going to discuss it in detail. So guys, let's talk about the intracranial part of it first and then we'll move on and talk about what happens extracranially. First, in the accessory nerve, also known as the XI nerve, this nerve is going to have two roots. Remember that. One is the cranial and one is the spinal root. What does that mean? One is coming directly from the brain. One is coming from your spinal cord, right? So that is actually the most interesting part about the accessory nerve. And all the accessory nerve has to do is supply the muscles. And just muscle supply, we all know that it is the swim. Special visceral efferent fibers are going to be present in the accessory nerve. No other fibers. That brings us to a 50% relief that we do not have to do all those efferent, efferent fibers, right? So in the um, accessory nerve, we have the cranial root. Let's talk about that first. The cranial root carries the special visceral efferent fibers uh, originating in the nucleus ambiguous, all right? And that's all you need to know. And we all know that SVE is M. So these are the motor fibers and they're coming from the nucleus ambiguous. Our cranial root is ready to go. Where is the next root? So we can leave the cranial cavity. We need to wait for the next root to be formed and then we'll leave the cranial cavity, right? So this nerve is formed in the spinal cord. So therefore the nucleus will be a long spinal nucleus that is running between C1 to C5 segments in their anterior gray column all right anterior gray column in the gray matter uh, in the in its anterior aspect uh, these uh, nuclei are going to be present and they will also give the special visceral efferent fibers these all will unite within the vertebral canal all these fibers will come and unite to form a single nerve known as the spinal root of the accessory nerve now how do we get it close to the cranial root the cranial root is waiting it needs a spinal root so that it can become the accessory nerve so for that this nerve the spinal root goes within the vertebral canal it ascends upwards and to enter the cranial cavity you have to use this very huge foramen and what is that foramen it is known as the foramen magnum through the foramen magnum, it enters, crosses the jugular tubercle, and finally, here comes the jugular foramen. Here is the cranial root waiting for our beautiful spinal root of the accessory nerve, and they become friends, and they become the what you call the accessory nerve. So we have the cranial root, we have the spinal root, and now let's supply the muscles. Basic of uh, The basics of supplying the muscles is that the cranial root is going to supply the muscles of the palate pharynx larynx, whereas the spinal root will supply muscles related to the neck. These are the sternocleidomastoid and trapezius, right? So let's move on to the extracranial course now. So now it's quite simple. All the accessory nerve has to do is bring its cranial and the spinal root traveling within the nerve. Now what happens, the cranial and the spinal root are going to be fused for only a little while because the truth is the cranial and spinal root are meant to separate. They're not made for each other. Only for a while they'll fuse, they'll meet at a point in their life. However, when the time comes that the inferior ganglion of the vagus nerve will be present beneath the jugular foramen, the cranial root is going to leave the spinal root all alone. And that is when the spinal root will start crying. It will have a bad day. Whereas the cranial root is happily going to go and hang out with the vagus nerve. They'll become best friends. And once the uh, cranial root and the vagus nerve are together, these two fuse and they will uh, in the pharyngeal branch of the vagus nerve that I've discussed in my vagus nerve video. Within the pharyngeal branch of the vagus nerve, they go to the pharyngeal plexus and from there they supply all the muscles of the uh, pharynx, palate and the larynx, except for the cancer villi palatini of the palate, except for the stylopharyngeus of the pharynx. We discussed that before, uh, watch the other videos if you haven't watched it yet. Then comes your spinal accessory nerve, spinal part of the accessory nerve. It is crying, it is lonely. Then it decides, okay, so I think I should, you know, figure out life for myself. So why not go to the neck muscles, right? What it does, it, it uh, goes downwards between the internal carotid artery, internal jugular vein. It uh, descends for a while and then it comes superficial to the in internal jugular vein. Once it comes superficial to it, it meets the anterior border of the sternocleidomastoid and it enters that muscle and gives it motor supply. So sternocleidomastoid, which is the chin turning muscle, is supplied by the spinal part of the accessory nerve. And once it's done with the sternocleidomastoid, it hasn't had enough. It needs more uh, muscles to supply. It has a lot of uh, battery in it. So what it does, it, go, it has to go to the trapezius. And you can't just go to the trapezius by jumping, right? You have to pass this triangle over here known as the posterior triangle of the neck. I'm sure you all remember. 
It passes through that, forms the content of the posterior angle of the neck and finally enters your trapezius muscle and ends up supplying it. And that is how it terminates. So these are the two parts of the accessory nerve. Uh, the destination is not to be together. The cranial goes to the palate pharynx and the larynx, whereas the spinal goes to the sternocleidomastoid trapezius. Trapezius, we all know, is a shrugger muscle. So if there's any lesion to our accessory nerve, we know what's going to happen. Firstly, the chin turning will become a problem because sternocleidomastoid is paralyzed. So if you put a resistance against their chin and ask them to move their chin to that side, they will not be able to do so. And the second thing is that there will be loss of power of shrugging the shoulders. If you ask the person against resistance, pull your shoulders up, they won't be able to do it. And apart from that, all of these muscles will be paralyzed as well. That is all you need to know about the accessory nerve. Really hope you understood. Do not forget to subscribe to my channel and thank you so much for watching.